I'm Alison Gopnik and I'm a professor of psychology and affiliate professor of philosophy at the University of California at Berkeley. And I study very young children and how they learn, how their minds work, how it is that they can learn as much as they do. And we know that very young children in the first five years of life are the best learners in the universe. They understand the everyday physics of the world around them, they understand other people, they learn a language, and we don't really know how it's possible for them to learn so much so quickly. But we're starting to get some clues, and the big picture is that children are using a lot of the same kinds of techniques that adult scientists do. Um, so we know that children are building up models, theories of the world around them, just everyday theories of the everyday world. Uh, we've learned that children are doing ex experiments, except that when kids do experiments, we call it getting into everything. So it turns out that just in the course of their everyday exploration and play, children are figuring out the causal structure of the world around them. Um, uh, in work that we've done in my lab, we've shown that children can take pretty complicated patterns of statistics and use those patterns of statistics to figure out what causes what, figure out the causal structure of the world. Again, one of the really basic, deep, fundamental uh, pillars of science. Uh, and in fact, in work that we've done most recently, uh, we've found that in some cases, the children are actually better learners than adults. So if you give four-year-olds and uh, undergraduates, for example, a situation where there's a problem that has an unusual or unlikely solution, uh, the children will actually be more likely to get to the unlikely solution than the adults do. So one of the things that I've been arguing is that children are really designed for learning. One of the great interesting puzzles about human beings is why we have this very, very long extended childhood. It's one of the things that really makes us different from other creatures. Chimps are mature by the time they're seven, they are producing as much food as they're consuming. And even in hunter-gatherer cultures, that's not true with humans until we're at least 15. And one idea that I've been arguing for is that that protected period gives children a chance to do the kind of wide-ranging exploration and learning that is the great, uh, one of the great secrets of human success. And then as adults, we can take all of that learning and exploration that we did as children and actually put it to use to solve the kinds of problems that we need to solve. Um, recently, we've been collaborating with people in computer science and artificial intelligence trying to see if we could design a computer that could learn as effectively as, as very young children do. And one idea that people in uh, computer science talk about is a tension between exploration and exploitation. So if you want a system that's going to go out and be effective in the world, one thing it has to do is explore, figure out how the world works, do experiments. Another thing it has to do is take all that information that it's gathered and actually put it to work to solve problems and make decisions swiftly and efficiently and effectively. And one of the arguments we've been making is that you could think about children as evolution's way of solving that problem. When you look in computer science, if you're trying to say design a computer that can solve that problem, a very good strategy is to start out by exploring widely and then only later narrow your range, the range of things you're going to consider and, and exploit instead. So you could think about childhood as being a kind of evolutionary way of implementing that strategy. Start out having a period where you're very protected, when you don't have to make any decisions, you don't have to do anything, and then shift into a period where you can take all the things that you learned in those, that first five years of your life um, and actually implement them to make things happen. Now, in terms of education, I think the moral of this is, is not that, as is increasingly the, increasingly the case, we should make preschools that are more academic, more like schools. If anything, what we should do is make schools that are more like preschools. We don't actually have to teach children. Um, uh, we don't have to actually make children learn. All we have to do is let them learn. The capacities to do this in a rich environment are there. And the very best preschool programs actually do that, give children a rich environment with lots of people around who care about them and just kind of let them loose, let them learn the things that they have to learn. Now, when you're talking about older children or uh, people in university, that gets to be a little more challenging, but I think the general moral that you get from studying the amazing um, learners between the ages of zero and five is that 
just those kind of natural scientific impulses, curiosity, exploration, imagination, that's the way that all of us humans have managed to learn as much as we do.